Thank you for checking out the Ringo Robot. In this video, we'll take you through a quick tour of the robot and get the software configured on your computer. Then you can start writing your own code. Ringo has three buttons. Each has a label on the inner surface of the circuit board. The center button is the power on button. Press this for a half second to turn on Ringo. You can also press this button at any time to reset the code on Ringo. This will cause the robot to start running your code again from the start of the program. The forwardmost button is the off button. Press this at any time to turn the power off. The rearmost button is the user button. You can read this button in your code to make Ringo do things when the button is pressed. Ringo ships with nine behaviors preloaded. When you first turn on Ringo, his tail LED will begin blinking. This indicates he's awaiting a selection of which behavior he should run. Each behavior is keyed to a different number button on the remote. Be sure to remove the protective strip from the battery on the remote control. You can back out of some of the behaviors by pressing the menu button on the remote, and some require that the reset button be pressed before selecting a new behavior. Visit the Ringo software page on the Plum Geek website for a list and a brief description of each of the different behaviors. When you plug your Ringo into your computer, it will automatically begin charging. The charge will stop automatically once the battery is full, and the charge indicator will turn off. Ringo will charge whether he's turned on or off, but he will charge faster if he's turned off. Have some fun playing with the preloaded behaviors for a while, then we'll set up some software on your computer and you can start writing your own code. Before you connect your robot to the computer for the first time, let's go through and install a few software components. These steps are spelled out in greater detail on our Getting Started page. The first step is to install the free Arduino coding environment. You'll use this program to write your code for the robot. If you already have Arduino installed, you can skip this step. Visit arduino.cc and select Software. Choose the correct download for your operating system. Once the download completes, finish the installation like any other software. Allow Arduino to start up one time, then exit the program. This will automatically create an Arduino folder in your Documents folder. We'll use that in a few minutes. Next, we'll install a driver that is necessary for your computer to talk to the robot. Refer to the Driver Installation section of the Getting Started page. Select the correct download for your operating system. Windows and Mac options are given, as well as information for Linux, which usually doesn't require a driver. Install the driver like any other software. On Windows systems, right-click on the installer and select Run as Administrator, then complete the install. Next, we'll install the required software libraries. You can find this file on the Getting Started page. Though this library file says Ringo Libraries, the library is identical for Ringo, Wink, and Spirit. Install it one time and you'll be set for all three robots. Download the zip file and open it. Then copy all the folders present in the zip. Now navigate to your Documents, Arduino, Libraries folder. The Arduino and Libraries folder should have been created automatically when you launched the Arduino software in the first step. Copy the folders from the zip file into this library's directory. Make sure you copy them into the actual library's folder. The correct directory structure is also shown on the Getting Started page. That's all for the software setup. Now let's look at some sketches to play with. Now go back to the website and navigate to the Ringo software page. On this page you'll find some useful downloads. The most important is the base sketch. You'll use this as a template for writing your own code. Note that the base sketch is different between Wink and Ringo, so if you're using both robots, be sure you're using the correct base sketch corresponding to the robot you're using. Arduino calls its code files sketches. Each sketch is a program you can load onto your robot. Eventually, you'll have many different sketches to do interesting things. Download the base sketch zip file. Copy the Ringo base sketch folder into the Arduino folder inside your Documents folder. Be sure to place this in the Arduino folder. Don't put this in the Libraries folder we used a while ago. We're all done with that for now. While we're here, let's go ahead and get the preloaded demo behavior sketch as well. This is a copy of the program that was preloaded on your robot. You can use this to restore the preloaded demo at any time or edit it on your own. Just like the base sketch, copy this inside your Arduino folder as well. If you like, you can further organize your sketches into additional folders. You can create new folders inside the Arduino folder and move similar sketches to this new folder. Now you're ready to start using the robot. Launch the Arduino IDE software. Once it opens, navigate to File, Sketchbook. You should see the sketches listed that you copied earlier. Arduino only updates this list when first launching, so if you don't see your sketches showing up, exit Arduino and restart the software. 
Select the base sketch. This sketch is a template you'll use to write your own code. Follow the first lesson for more details. You should see a string of tabs across the top of the window. If you launch the sketch from Windows Explorer, these tabs may not show up. For this reason, we suggest always opening the sketch from within the Arduino program. You'll get started writing your own code inside the loop function. Follow the lessons in the Ringo guidebook to learn how. To test the upload process, we'll show you how to reinstall the preloaded examples. This will show you how the upload process works and also show you how to restore the preloaded examples in the future. Open the preloaded demo sketch. This is the code file for the example behaviors that were preloaded on your robot. We'll just test the process for now, but once you learn more, you can go back and edit this code to customize it on your own. Go ahead now and plug your Ringo into the computer via USB. Also make sure Ringo is powered on. The new Wink 2 and Ringo 2 robots have the programming hardware directly on the robot. If you have the original Wink or Ringo robots, you'll use the external programmer board to load your code. The process is exactly the same, except you use the programmer board to convert your computer's USB signals for the robot. Be sure the ribbon cable is connected to all 10 pins on both the programmer and the robot. The ribbon cable can go either way, just be sure the side of the cable facing up on the programmer is also facing up on the robot. Before you can send code to the robot, you'll need to set a few things in the Arduino Tools menu. This usually only needs to be done once. In the Tools Board menu, Select Arduino Pro or Pro Mini. Once this is set, reopen Tools and set Processor to ATmega328 8 MHz. Alternately, you can also select the Arduino FIO. The FIO is a discontinued board and may not be supported in future versions of Arduino, so we suggest using the Pro or Pro Mini selection instead. Either one should work fine. Select Tools one more time and select a port. A new COM port should appear when plugging in the robot. On Windows, it will say COM with a number, and on Mac, it will say USB Serial or something similar. If you have several ports, try plugging and unplugging the robot. Wait a few seconds and see what port appears or disappears when plugging in the robot. This will be the correct port to select. When loading a new sketch onto the robot, the Arduino program will first compile your human-readable code into machine-readable ones and zeros that the robot's processor can understand. To make sure your code compiles correctly without errors, you can click the Verify button at the top left of the Arduino window. To actually load the program onto your robot, click the Upload button. It's the arrow button next to the Verify button. The Upload button will automatically compile your code first, then load it onto the robot. You don't need to do the Verify process each time. It's just a helpful tool to make sure your code is OK. Be sure your robot is plugged in and powered on, then click the Upload button. Watch the progress bar at the bottom of the window. After it compiles, the code will begin uploading onto your robot. You should see the data light strobing on the robot during the upload. Note that you can begin an upload at any time the robot is turned on. Even if the robot is already doing something else, like running the motors, you can still begin uploading new code. The old code already running on the robot is erased and replaced with the new code. If you want to restore a different program onto the robot, just open the other sketch and upload again. If you have problems uploading, be sure the robot is powered on, be sure the correct board and processor are selected, and be sure the correct COM port is selected. If an upload fails, the Arduino program may get hung up. To clear this, unplug the USB cord from the robot and reconnect. This seems to clear the problem and will allow you to attempt the upload again. The most common reason for an upload failing is forgetting to turn on the power. Now your robot and software are all set up and you know how to load code onto the robot. Have a look over the Ringo guidebook from the website to get started. Good luck!